you know when i started contemplating marriage the lord asked me what is the purpose of marriage and the thoughts of the things that were taught began to run through my mind you know we hear things like marry who you love um it's about happiness make sure you are happy and all of these are very beautiful what the lord said to me he said does he sit does marriage sit on these things because you can be happy with somebody that is not going in the direction of your destiny if you have not found your destiny because the things that make men happy are strange <laughs> the things that make men happy they are strange and god began to give me some secret things that i've never heard preached anywhere you know he told me the first purpose of marriage is to give you the privilege to be conformed to the image of god he said that is why you will not find who you want to marry on the street you will walk on that person you will cultivate that person and while you are cultivating that person yourself will be cultivated in the process so you may be looking for a woman that is patient meanwhile her impatience is what will help you to learn temperance and endurance so when god points at your wife your wife may not have patience so if you are looking for marriage to be happy and you think happiness is about patience you will miss your wife because the idea is that you will be conformed to the image of christ meanwhile the endurance that you don't have is our patience that will teach you that endurance so god will deliberately allow you to marry her and it may take you six years to cultivate endurance and you will learn it by teaching her that's a school of the spirit so he said the, the a higher purpose of marriage is for you to be conformed to the image of god so that happiness will be will be captured in fulfillment not in excitement it is when you have cultivated her and the glory in her spirit begins to emanate that's when you'll be fulfilled it's in that fulfillment that you'll be happy and I, I never saw it anywhere so i began to you know i used to love, love tall and fair damsels <laughs> and my goal of happiness was to find a woman without blemish <laughs> when i went to pray i gazed into the spirit and i contemplated a tall and elegant damsel flawless in expression <laughs> he said what i'm looking for is for you to be conformed to the image of god so it changed my paradigm so when the purpose of a thing is not known the abuse is inevitable he told me the second purpose of marriage is to preserve divine heritage he said the reason you could trace jesus back to adam is because god trapped that divine order in a bloodline so when men hide things they hide them in a bank but when god hides things he hides it in men so the choices of marriage is to help transfer eternal ordinations from one generation to another so it is god's way of hiding dimensions of the spirit so god will prefer you marry someone with a godly heritage than to marry a a, a, a diva because god is trapping an ordination and only in such vessels can eternal ordination be captured i said wow <laughs> i was not ready to marry if i married five years ago my wife would have been a goddess but my ministry would have end it would have ended by now <laughs> he said the top purpose of marriage is worship he said because it is in finding your wife that you will learn how to bend your will because worship is not a good song worship is the ability to conform to the will of the father so it is no it's not what i desire it's what you desire not my will but thine. and he said it's a marriage that you will discover that <laughs> i said wow so when the purpose of a thing is not known the abuse is inevitable he said the fourth purpose of marriage is so that you can learn the mystery of oneness that's the mystery that holds the godhead together the father the son and the spirit the ability to live and become one and that was why he said for the woman love is submission and they say for the man love is sacrifice so everything the woman has she relinquishes it and it looks as if she's vulnerable and then everything the man has it commands the man to lavish it on the woman so at the end of the day nobody owns nothing and as they grow on that corridor a point come 
the woman is lost in the man and the man is lost in the woman so the mystery of divinity can be manifested in their home so when you step into their family their family become heaven on earth because god dwells there you know when you come on the altar you can coordinate yourself you can't do that with your wife your wife knows you so when you are trying to be to act wise they will say this man is a hypocrite i know <laughs> And when you look at the face of the woman, you can tell who that man is. When oneness is achieved, alignment is achieved. So that man, his communication frequency with his wife will become heightened. When he looks at that woman, he is saying what, what, much more than words can ever articulate. That's a mystery. It's only in the Godhead that you find such mystery. That the son can be on earth. He knows what the father is doing in heaven. It's oneness. He said the fifth purpose is priesthood. He said when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable.